welcome to Mid Gotham Mind Space. The sound in my music studio is an acoustic mess. As you can hear, there's a lot of reverb. And I'm working with an acoustic firm from Lyon, ID Acoustic, on an uber professional total acoustic makeover of this space. But because of the current situation, this project has been postponed and I've decided to spend one day to make a quick and dirty DIY acoustic treatment of my room. And at the same time, I'm gonna build my own universe over there. Let's take some before and after sound examples. This is my voice in stereo microphones. And this is the sound of my voice in a wireless microphone put on my chest, which is probably a little bit better, but I think you can still hear the room sound. Oh, oh. We're doing sound test here. Let's get to it and see if we can make this better. I used to record voiceover inside this booth here, but after today I might not need it. By the way, this is a touring backdrop and here's the original piece. I do have some strange pieces in my storages. <laughs> Better! I believe we're making some progress. I've been told by Olivier from ID Acoustic that this thing mainly reduces the treble of the sound. The problem with the pyramid-shaped foam panels is that it's too thin, the density is too low, which means that it will let lower frequencies pass straight through it and it will absorb only higher frequencies. But I was hoping that putting the foam on the backside of these perforated plywood scraps and hang them a bit away from the wall would make these cheap panels function a little bit better. So you should try to avoid like corners, stone corners and this is a professional acoustic panel that I have borrowed from Olivier. The reason you don't want a straight angle is because the sound keeps bouncing between them. If you shift one, you get the sound coming and bouncing in another direction and you can't have a lot of echo going back and forth between the walls. Can you tell me if it's straight? <laughs> oh, you can, I see in the monitor it was. Thank you so much. So as you can see here, the panel is hanging over 20 centimeters away from the wall. This creates this air gap between the panel, which diffuses or dampens the sound twice, I think. Here I'm using a higher density professional acoustic panel, which will absorb lower frequencies better. Wanna see a trick I learned from Jimmy Darsta? Check this out. Just stick a stick under when you're sawing something big. That stick will hold the piece for you while you're sawing. Boom! Brilliant. So it's the start of day two, I couldn't do everything yesterday, so now I'm going to attach three of these plywood to the ceiling, then I'm gonna put dampening on top of them, and then I think the acoustic treatment is done. It's starting to look like the Death Star. <laughs> Broaden your minds, my dears, and allow your eyes to see past the mundane. One more. I have a couple of boxes of floor tiles. I'm gonna put several layers of them. So we have like a three centimeter thick thing. And I'm gonna put them on top of these plywood things. And I'm hoping that this will take away quite a lot of reverb in the room. We're getting somewhere. So finishing touch, I found my two yoga mats. I'm gonna put them on top. I think they will do the final trick. When I've been making the room more silent, I've been starting to hearing the hallway. I want to make this door thicker and tighten the edges so we're not hearing this echo into the studio. And yeah, I spray glued myself. It doesn't look pretty. I leaned against the table with spray glue. <laughs> Wear your scar like a crown, kids. Didn't do a lot of difference. The sound didn't stop until I added this little strip down here under the door. This is the sound before. Behind this fabric, 
we have an echo chamber. There might be a standing wave from this wall over to that wall of the lower frequencies that passes straight through a thin veil of fabric. And I'm gonna try to make some kind of traps in the corners behind the fabric. I don't think this helped, but I, but I know it didn't hurt. I showed my wood-filled corners for Olivier from ID Acoustic and he said that I would be much better off with normal base traps. You can use fiberglass insulation from your building store, put it in a 45 degree angle in the corner and it will trap a lot of base. And I will try to do this in upcoming makeovers of the acoustic treatment. Let's listen with and without the fabric. I want to believe that it's better after I put the wood in, but it's so much psychosomatic in these things. I can't wait for Olivier and the team from ID Acoustic to come here and redo everything I just did in a professional way. So now we're ready to record the after clips to really show what my acoustic treatment has done. <laughs> Starting very good. Okay, so I have filled the room with a lot of DIY panels. Let's see the difference before after. This is my horse in stereo microphones before stereo mic into the camera after the fix. This is my horse in stereo microphones before stereo mic into the camera after the fix. You can clearly hear how much shorter the room is sounding, but I don't think it sounds really good. I do think that Olivier is right, that you can hear a lot of low frequencies, so the room has a kind of rumbly, closed-in kind of sound. Let's try to reduce some of the low frequencies with EQ and see how that sounds. Stereo mic into the camera after the fix. 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 Also, when the equalizer is on, I think it sounds closed in, so this treatment will help me to record speech on my videos. But for real music recording, I can't wait to have this room professionally treated by ID Acoustic. And uh, this is my voice before. This is me from across the room after the fix. wireless microphone on my chest before acoustic treatment, after with wireless microphone strapped to my chest. And I feel a big difference is that I don't have the same will to scream. When I listen to myself in some videos, I sound very forced and it's like I'm screaming. And maybe I've been trying to overpower this, this echo boomy room. So now I can talk a little bit softer perhaps, and I think that will make a nicer voice to listen to as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Lucky number. I'm so happy I did this. I think this is going to pay off a lot for me. It's going to be easier for me to film videos because I can just talk directly to the camera and my voice will hopefully be okay for you to listen to. I'm gonna turn this space into a magical film studio. Let me show you. So I always wanted an angle like this. I have a camera here with a microphone hanging from the ceiling. And here you can see me in the second camera. It's this kind of talking headshot. So I can just sit down and record and film myself in a nice way with good sound. So I'm gonna make the room dark and turn on some lights coming from the side. So now the light is coming from this direction, it's like we're in space with the sun over there. And as you can see in the camera, it looks much better already. But we're gonna turn this into something uber cool with some fantastic props that I'm gonna use. And in here we have Vintergatan Stjernhimmel, means Vintergatan Starry Sky. This is a module of glow-in-the-dark stars that me and my mom made together. Every time we arrived on a stage, we always put these stars up and made the stage our own. It was a really cool system that fit in this small box. 
So you could push these ones out like this and on these hangers you could then attach arms that went out like this and we had three of those and they could fill actually a really big stage from only this small box. So after each gig these stars were always a little bit tangled together and I remember there was one show especially when I was so excited to go to the after party so I just shoved them down in the box and I remember Evelina punishing me for the next gig but I had to untangle all the stars myself because I wasn't disciplined. <laughs> Already it doesn't look Ah, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna fill the space with these glow-in-the-dark stars. <laughs> I can put them in the back and I can also put them closer to the camera. The way this worked is that when you add an arm on one side, the whole thing will fall to that side. But then you can add another arm and move the arms in and out for balance. This is so fun because this reminds me, like, Every time when we were touring, we come to the stage and we start to put up these. And the people from the venue were like looking at it with a little like, what is this going to be, you know, because it looked so raggedy and so awful. And like 10 minutes later, when we had all three up and Barney put like UV lights on them and closed everything down, they were like, ah, we get it now. What looks like a riggedy raggedy in this camera already is starting to take shape in this camera. I would have preferred an entirely black background without the music box, but the music box actually looks a little bit like this kind of star sign in the sky. So what this scene is missing is a Philips HD75 coffee maker. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not sure I ever seen this in real life. This is giving me goosebumps. Ah, oh, the name is still on there. Ho oh, ho ho, that's heavy. I actually went and got a crane. So let's move this off the table. And we can slide the box off. <laughs> so this is not built by me. This is built by Adam Franius. Adam, you are a genius. We made it for a website once and I don't think I've ever seen it in real life. Don't mind me, I'm just walking my planet, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> I do think it's cool if you can see some details. I don't want it too much in the background. I'm gonna bump my head into this thing every day. The things you do for love. Let's put the ambience light off and see if we can get a space feeling. And the roof lights. The madness. Ah, oh, this is starting to getting somewhere, isn't it? So actually in the camera, I would like to feel that I am closer to the camera. The planet is a little bit in the background to create more depth in the image. But I also don't want to lose detail on the planet. Hmm. Well, I have this and my idea has always been to finish off the space scene with having this telescope looking at the planet. I'm not sure how much this is adding. Uh, the problem with the narrative of a telescope is like a telescope is used to look at something from a distance. And I thought it was cool if the telescope was pointing at the planet. And the telescope is almost making it like if we were on Earth, <laughs> which we're obviously not because we're in the Wintergarten universe now. Uh -uh. Telescope is, has to go. I mean, when you think about it, your device, your laptop or your phone that you're looking at this video right now is the telescope <laughs> through which you're looking into the universe of Wintergatan. Now, when we know the basic composition, I'm going to put much more stars in and tweak the lighting and all the positions and see how perfect I can get my vision. Let's go. So this is what's known in physics as entanglement. This lamp that is straight behind me is giving a nice under contour on the planet. And when I hold up my hands, you can see this contour here looks really nice. 
there's not a lot of stars down here. And it would have been nice to have some stars in the front as well. I was always accused to have my head in the clouds, and now I put my head in the stars instead. <laughs> We're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars, as Oscar Wilde famously said. I have an Erlund EHRM, a large condenser microphone, right on top of the camera. And what I hope is that I don't have to do any muffling behind it. If I talk to you straight like this, it should work well. And we can do cool transitions in and out by wiping. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. So today I was welding and I was building stuff with plywood. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Let's use some test uh, quotes to make it realistic. <laughs>